Hello! A happy 2022 first video of the year. I know I've been gone for an entire month, but I will explain that ish kind of in the next Fun Employed episode, you guys, which is coming up next week. <laughs> Hi guys, it's me, Max, and if you don't know who I am, I am a self-improvement slash mental health YouTuber who also likes to do random things that she likes to do, like gardening and painting and streaming and whatever. So if you're into all of those things, subscribe. So we're starting off the year with a relatively old video. I have some old footage that I had been planning to edit for a while now, but things and, and upload schedules kind of got in the way and I never got to fully put it out. Last year, I joined a flow art workshop. That's right, a flow art workshop. One day, my mom came knocking into my room and was like, hey, my friend is conducting a flow art workshop and it comes with all the things that you need. Do you want to do it? And I told my mom, yes, I do want to do it because if you guys don't know, I actually love to paint. I'm not saying that I'm good at it, but I do love doing it. And I had been wanting to tap into my creative self for a while now at that point in my life and hadn't been able to do so. So I did feel like the workshop was kind of a godsend and the perfect way to kickstart that fire, that creative fire in me once again. The Flow Art Workshop took place in the span of a month and we had class one day every weekend so that i believe it was every saturdays for four classes in a month and it was taught by my aunt tita jo oigunko who is a professional painter and artist she's actually kabarkada with my mom who is also a professional painter and artist so i guess you could say creativity is in my blood mm -hmm. asmr unboxing So many canvases. So the workshop came with all the materials you actually need to take part in it. You've got your flow art medium, popsicles, cups, and glossy top coat, and then a bunch of canvases, and of course your paint. I wasn't going into it expecting much. I actually kind of had an idea of what flow art is, but didn't really exactly know what exactly it was. So safe to say, when I entered the workshop and went into day one of it, I was pretty surprised with the events that took place during it. That, that makes it sound so ominous, but basically, there was a sound bath. So if you guys don't know what a sound bath is, it is basically a spiritual activity where someone who is trained in creating sounds with all these instruments plays them for you and then you close your eyes and you meditate to the sound. Hence being called a sound bath because you're basically being... Uh, I don't know what's the term, drenched in music? I don't know, but but that was the whole thing. And I wasn't expecting to have like a spiritual side to flow art. And I did enjoy it because y'all know me, I love to meditate. I love to do the yoga things. So it was pretty much up my alley. And I did ask our workshop teacher, Tita Jo, why she included the sound bath. And she said that it felt like a good part to add to the entire program because the sound bath calms you down and it grounds you. It helps you let go of any tensions and worries for the day and let yourself just flow wherever your mind or I guess your mental and emotional being wants to go. But it is a good prerequisite to beginning flow art because the whole principle of flow art is about letting go of perfection and control. And you will soon see why. So day one began and we started mixing things. Guys, guys, look at this. Look at my face. I look like a freaking blubber fish. It was a whole lot of fun. I really enjoyed myself a lot and it reminded me a lot of being a kid again in art class where I can just get my hands dirty and make things and have fun. That, that truly was how it felt like for me. And, and I don't know, something about it just made me feel really happy and even satisfied to be back in the arts again, you know, and getting into the paint. 
quite literally and figuratively getting into the into the arts and the creativity of painting and all that jazz anyway this is a lot of rambling day two day two came around and we started learning different techniques of flow art which for some reason in my mind i never realized that there were different ways to do flow art but there is where in day one it was basically mixing a lot of paints and then pouring and layering the paints on top of each other and doing the whole circular tilting the canvas over so the the paint will like spread and stuff day two is about learning to create a primer for your art or like a base for your art first so that when you pour in more paints it runs smoothly when you tilt it around you know less friction because there's already some wet paint laid onto the canvas And also layering your paints in the cup first and then pouring it all together instead of layering them on the canvas. It was pretty fun. You you'd really do get very, very distinct, different results. And I guess choosing which technique to go with truly depends on you and what kind of outcome you're hoping to get. If you do want something a little more calm and elegant, in my opinion, you go for the basic flow art where you layer on the canvas and tilt it around. But if you want something a little bit more frazzled and chaotic <laughs> then you go for the layering in the cup and then putting it on and then like wiggling instead of rotating and stuff day three i wasn't there i didn't get to attend class because i had to do an emergency vet attendance with my pets our dogs but that's okay everything's fine don't worry about it they're all good they're all healthy now so i guess we'll move over to day four day four <laughs> Oh, here it is. <laughs> All right, I'll just angle myself like this. Wait, is the shot okay? Hell yeah. As long as it, are you sure you're recording though? I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what I'm doing at this point. I'm just doing whatever. <laughs> And then you just, and then it's super hard. Oh no! This is where the descent to chaos begins. It's not a perfect surgery. Why did you, why did you tell it to do a I didn't you tell it to do anything. You suggested it, and I liked it. Yeah, well, I suggest so many things. it's still your fault. That's a really thick smile. It's what? okay, we'll, we'll make it like um, a social commentary on people's social anxiety. Around Halloween. Around Halloween. Uh, I don't know what to tell you, man. I I will call it social anxiety. <laughs> what I'll call it. Yeah, get like a full look at what I did. It's a smiley face. <laughs> Do you see how I intentionally made it look like a person smiling, but with squiggly puffy lines? which reflects the shakiness one feels when going through an anxiety attack but still pretending like everything is okay. That is the genius behind my artistry. Mm, anxiety all year round except Halloween. Except <laughs> especially on Halloween because people go out in the streets looking scary so of course it's gonna make you anxious. You think anyone's gonna believe that? The workshop, of course, also required us to name our own art pieces, which surprisingly enough for me was what I considered to be the hardest part. When you name something, it has to make sense, you know, or at least that's how I feel about my art pieces. It has to make sense with what I see on the canvas. And Tita Jo did suggest that for us to name our canvases, we can try looking at the art that we've just made and then seeing if we see any images and then go with those. So for example, I named one Storming the Tower because I had one that looked like a knight was about to go and like ransack an, a tower. And then I also had one that I called Freezing Over because it looked like the earth was freezing over. But this is the perfect example of what I was saying earlier in this video where flow art is about letting go of perfection and trying to control what you can't control because as you can see, in the clips of these videos of me creating my art pieces, you literally pour and, you know, tilt or wiggle or blow, right? 
you have no say in where the paint goes. You can try to direct it somewhere, but there's no guarantee that it will turn out the way you imagined it to turn out. And in this case, with naming the pieces, I had to just purely go with the flow of how my paintings would turn out. I wanted to name it according to how it ended up looking like and not how I intended it to look like. If that makes any sense. At this point, safe to say I truly enjoyed discovering a new medium of painting, a new way to paint. And I was also a little sad that it was over. But you know, that doesn't mean that I can't continue creating flow art on my own without the workshops. But before I get into having my own personal flow art independence, Let's first get into me finally being able to take part in my very first art exhibit. Up, yes. And hear the music. Yes. Exhibit baby! <laughs> Conclusion! Psych! Conclusion! So now that the flow art workshop is over, I can safely say that this type of art creation or painting creation really has carried over to my life now outside of the workshop where I found another way to incorporate flow art into my personal pieces and I'm going to show this to you. It's not done yet, okay? I'm still working on it, but... Thanks to the workshop, I have started painting again on my own. And I found that using flow art as a background really adds like a little bit more flavor to my art. This is an art piece that I've created and I don't know if you guys can see it properly, but I use gold and white paint to create a flow art background. And on top of which, I've painted my flowers. And to me, incorporating flow art into this particular art piece of mine made it so much prettier than me just painting a solid background behind all those flowers. Again, this isn't done yet. As you can see, not all of the flowers are finished painting. That's definitely one of the many things that I'm really happy about having learned or actually realized through the workshop is that flow art isn't just using it as a as one particular art piece but you can incorporate it into other kinds or types of paintings if that makes any sense and it really has elevated my art pieces i feel like so i guess with that being said um i do want to leave you guys in this video with a bit more insight given to me by our teacher tita jo Uygunko. she stated that flow art is a way to play and if i haven't said it enough already in this video it's also a way to let go of any fears and anxieties fear of what anxiety over what purely fear and anxiety over not knowing what is next and in this case when you're creating your paintings not really knowing how it will turn out quote unquote flow allows us to go where the paints want to flow with absolutely no pressure no rules and no structure and if you're like me that is definitely uncharted territory and i feel like is a really good mindfulness practice as well Lastly, from our flow art teacher, she said, I'm gonna be reading it from the monitor, so please excuse me. Flow art allowed me to let go of fear. Fear of not knowing how to paint, fear of not being good enough and still hearing the voices in my head from my past teachers, well-meaning family and friends correcting my work. Flow art gave me the confidence to let go and express myself. So if you're someone who's been wanting to get a little more creative or try something new or maybe even learn something new, flow art might actually be perfect for you because it's easy. And you don't have to be perfect at it to create something valuable and good. It kind of forces you to roll with the punches and see what things you can create without intending to create them. And I think that's really, really great. Just relax and have fun and create something with your own two hands that you've never really made before. So yeah, thanks for watching, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next week for our new vlog episode. Bye! Bye.